Hi, welcome. In this video, I'm going to explain to you the fully associative feature of SharpCam. First of all, what do we mean by fully associative? Well, in SharpCam, whenever you create a toolpath from an object, it's always associated with that object. Whatever changes you make to the object, whether you delete it or modify it in some way, the toolpath will change instantly. Now, you can never have an orphan toolpath, and what I mean by an orphan toolpath is where you make a change to an object and the toolpath doesn't change. Uh, maybe you might even delete the object with the toolpath still there, in which case the association is lost completely between the object uh, that created it and, and the toolpath, and therefore it makes it very difficult to manage. So let's go ahead and, and demonstrate. I'm just going to create a pocket operation first. So I'm going to select a tool. 12 millimeter tool. Let's do some pocketing. Just enter some nominal cutting data here. I'm going to pocket this uh, inner contour here. So select that and add it to the operation. So as you can see, that's now been pocketed. Um, so let's do some filleting, for example. So I'm going to choose fillet and let's change one of the fillets to say uh, 20 millimeters. And let's change the fillet here and here. So you can see straight away, well, first thing you can see around here, the pocketing has instantly been updated. And then we get a confirmation dialog box, just letting you know that this pocket has been modified. And there could be a whole list here because you may have a number of operations associated with that contour. And in fact, they might even be hidden. So you might forget that there's a toolpath associated with this contour. So this is just a confirmation that that change has been made. The important thing is that the change was made instantly because we can generate toolpaths so quickly, we're able to update instantly. You don't need to remember to go in and, for instance, say regenerate. Next, I'm going to add a, an island to this pocketing operation. So let me just uh, choose a rectangle and I'm just going to put a rectangle down in the middle here. And they're going to go back to the operations tab, right click the operation and edit. So then I'm going to select this rectangle and then add that to the operation as well. That's it. As you can see, again, the, the pocketing has been already uh, updated. And what I want to show you though is if I was to um, select this contour and then go to delete it, so right click delete, again it's noticed that the contour is part of the epoxying operation and in fact it's the one that we're currently working on, do you want to confirm? So in this uh, dialog box we have a choice of yes I do want to or no or I didn't, I'd forgot that it was associated with an operation I don't want to do it but we're going to go yes. So again you can see that the pocket was, that the rectangle was deleted and the operation has been updated immediately. Let's um, machine the outside of this uh, gear housing here with a profile operation. We will still use the same tool. So I'm going to choose profile into some nominal cutting data again. Not too worried about this. Select the outside and add it to the operation. Let's just zoom all so we can see it completely. So at the moment, um, the start point of the toolpath is always next to the start point of the contour. Let me deselect everything. So the start point of this contour is marked by the orange connection marker because it's closed. Now if I was to change the start point, the, the start point will follow it because it's associative. So let me choose the uh, set start point command. And then maybe I want to set the start point in the middle here. Again, you can automatically you can see the start points change because the direction now is indicating and, and we're given a confirmation dialog box just to let you know that, there's, that you've made a change and there are implications, but again, it was instant and automatic. And in fact, um, what I will show you here, if I go to edit that operation again, let's put a, an entry and exit on. Uh, let's come in with a line and an arc and out with a line and an arc and then set the start point again. Let's move it over to here, say. Yes, OK. And you can see here that the entry and exit again has followed the start point, which is directly opposite the new start point on the contour. I'm going to add another island back into the pocket operation. So that's a rectangle. And right click on the pocket operation and edit it. 
and then add this rectangle into the pocket in operation. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to move this island. So select it, choose the move command. Um, base point, I'm going to move it from the start and I'm just going to put this down in a random position, say to there. And again, you can see the pocketing has automatically been updated and we again get a confirmation dialog box just to let you know that, that that's what's happened. So you can see the associativity in work there. Let's go and move the uh, outside, sorry, deselect that rectangle. Let's select the outside contour. I'm going to move this contour. So we choose the move command. I'm not too bothered where this is coming from really. Let's take it from the center of that. And uh, let's just zoom out. You can see that you can never not zoom out. So we're zooming out whilst we're halfway through the move. And let's put that down there. And again, the following operations are updated as a result of the, sorry, I've chosen copy of that. That's fine. Uh, as a result of the copy. Now, as I had the include tool pass button uh, checkbox checked, it's moved the contour and created a copy. What I will do though, is I'm going to undo that and just show you the move. So let's select that contour again. This time I'm going to choose move, where from, from the center there. Now in this, we don't get a choice of including the tool pass here because we have to, if you're moving something, the tool pass have to go with it or they'd be orphaned. So just put the, the contour down there and go okay, because it's just confirmed that that's happened. And you can see that the contour has moved, but the tool pass moved with it. Uh, so therefore, again, that, that's the associativity at work. So this this uh, philosophy follows through on anything that, that could have an effect on the object that the toolpath was created from. So for instance, if we were rotating um, contours, the, the toolpath would, would go with it if, if we elected uh, that to be the case, and mirroring, uh, scaling. Um, so as you can see, the, because we can generate a toolpath so quickly, everything is just taken care of automatically and instantly. And that's the end of this video. Thank you very much.